will be an SC2 portion, of course, and it's going to be Hydra coming out for CJ Entis, an MSL uh -oh. champion, and very Gosu Zerg here. Although his stats last season were about 50%, 7 wins, 8 losses. Um, but he is more of a ZBZ specialist, as you can see there. His Hydra, uh, sorry. <laughs> his Muta Micro is amazing. He actually out Muta Micro Jadong in a best of uh, five ZBZ series in the MSL. Like, he oh. took out Jadong, which was sick. So, this guy's definitely scary. Meanwhile, on the other hand, we have Crazy Hydra coming out for KT Rolster. It is going to be a ZBZ Hydra versus Crazy Hydra. Crazy Hydra. Oh, God. Hydra oh God. versus CH. I'm just going to call him, like, CH or something. Or Ch. We could just call him Crazy. <laughs> so, this sets it. What's the uh, Flash is going to play StarCraft 2, correct? Yeah, and that is a very good point. Flash is playing StarCraft 2, guys. Oh my god, everybody get excited. Dude, it'd be so funny if they like had him lined up for the third set and it ends up being 2-0 in the SE2 section. That'd and then the he worst. just like doesn't play. <laughs> I, I, I don't think they could do that. Like that would be That would be that would be seriously a tragedy. I really hope we see him play, and then we get an ace and see him play StarCraft 2 again. Ah, yeah, and get a different matchup as well. That'd be nice. Yeah. So watch him play like TVZ and then TVZ or something. Yeah. All right, epic pro league intro. We should be getting into the game momentarily. It's a pretty neat intro, as I got to say. I'm really a fan. Yeah. Game yeah, 3, we did not see this map in the other series because that ended the Brood War section at 2-0. This map is Neo Electric Circuit in Sale. What can you tell us about this map? Alright, well the interesting thing about this map is in... Uh, excuse me. There is in fact a back door that you can break down. This map, in fact, has the Brood War equivalent of destructible rocks. That's right. Oh, man. If you break those down, there you open up a second entrance into your opponent's main base. Um, essentially, there are 10 stacked power generators on this map. So uh, if you actually just try and kill it with normal units like Zerglings, um, it takes forever because there's 10 of them. But if you use a unit that does splash damage, like uh, Lurkers, for example, you can take them down extremely quickly. So that's something to be aware of. Yeah, uh, very important. Another important map feature is that there's no ramp on this map. It is completely Ooh. flat from your main to your natural to the uh, rest of the map. So... Uh, yeah, you got to be a little bit more careful. I think in ZBZ it's not really going to matter that much. I mean, yeah. you will have to be a bit uh -oh. more careful of, you know, huge ling attacks since you can't just hold the top of a ramp. Yeah. But uh, not as much as in other matchups, I think. All right. So in the bottom left-hand <laughs> corner, we have in the purple Zerg, Hydra of CJ Antis. And in the bottom right-hand corner, in the yellow, we have Crazy Hydra <laughs> of KT Rolster. And we're just going to call him Crazy, I guess? Can we agree on that? Yeah, that's fine with me. Or we can we'll call, call him, him like crazy. Yellow so we've Zerg. got Crazy of KT and Hydra of CJ. Now, Why looks, did they actually do this to us? Sorry, it looks like a 9-pool gas uh, yeah. coming out for Crazy Hydra, whereas it's a 12-pool for Hydra. Now, he should be okay uh, to defend against this. Um, actually. But it's going to be some very early aggression slash tech coming out for... Uh, for Crazy Hydra. Now, uh, just a, a brief note on, you know, what you're, we would expect to see here. Um, ZBZ and Brood War is a very scrappy matchup. Generally, it stays very, very low economy. You know, like 10 drones max the whole game sometimes. Uh, and basically, uh, it, it turns into these Mutalisk uh, Zergling battles. You almost never see any other unit besides uh, Mutas, Lings, and Drones. Just because... Or Scourge. Um, or Scourge, sorry, yes. <laughs> and Scourge, of course. Uh, just because of the, the high mobility of those units really... Uh, makes other options not quite as viable. Indeed, we got a few links for Crazy out on the map moving across to the left side. Uh, I don't think either, well, I guess they both now know where each other is based on the Overlord scouting patterns that they've noticed. Uh, Crazy also, uh, excuse me, Hydra also getting gas and speed certainly going to be on the way soon, as well as expanding a bit before his yellow Zerg opponent, who is Crazy Hydra. Crazy. God, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the worst. Now, this Whoever is a very, very standard uh, safe opening from Hydra to go for a 12-pool expand. Um, that is kind of the go-to build that most Zergs do. Uh, it, it is safe against everything from 9-pool over-pool, uh, and, it and it's still playable against like a 12-hatch. 
whereas the 12 hatch itself is not safe against like a 9 pool. So it's kind of like the in-between safe build that you would do. And looks like, uh, you see, he has to pull two drones here against the 9 pool because he is going to be slightly behind in the Zergling count. He also be, has to be careful because his opponent has Zergling speed already and he does not. Um, so he's got to be careful of the Zerglings running oh, by. Yeah, this or hatchery actually getting quite low. Oh my he's god. Just gonna go he for forces it. He a cancel forces on the hatchery. Cancel. That's pretty big. Nice micro uh, no there. No hatchery actually up yet for uh, Crazy Hydra. Uh, God, I'm just going to have to call him Crazy Hydra. That sounds too awkward. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> I we have layers actually morphing for both sides, but the expansion is once again replanted for Hydra. Yeah, but it looks like his link speed is finished, so Crazy Hydra's uh, link shenanigans are going to be put to a stop here. But he is going for his Spire now, and actually he's just going to turn around and engage, and it looks like uh, Hydra's links were on move commands to ch to give chase, so that was actually a very smart turnaround to attack right there. That was actually a beautiful move, and now he has a link advantage. He's going on the offensive once again, uh, going to take some more pot shots on this hatchback. I highly doubt he'll be able to uh, force a cancel a second time. He's going to go for the links. See. Oh man, three drones being pulled More off. That is so bad. Pulled. I mean, this is not good. Hydra has like ten drones in total, so to pull three drones off mining is huge at this point in time. And yeah. If you take a look at his main, there's almost nothing there. He's actually cutting gas a little bit here. Uh, Flash with a bit of a smile. He knows that his team's got the advantage here for sure. Uh, and actually, the lair is not even done yet for uh, CJ Hydra. So he's definitely going to be a lot in a lot of trouble against these mutas. You know, he'll, he'll be forced to build spores, and even even then he'll be putting himself at a huge disadvantage. So I think uh, Crazy Hydra has almost certainly sealed himself a win here. I feel. Yeah, I mean he's going to need spore colonies to defend this. There's no way he's going to get his spire up in time. He has to have his expansion, however. Uh, he does have that one thing going for him, so he'll be able to get that drone count up a little bit. Uh, and he is aware of the muta threat. Indeed, we do see the Evolution no Chamber going to start building some Spore Colonies, um, running that Overlord away, but it is most likely going to get picked off. Now, this is very interesting, because as you said, he does have the expansion. If he just turtles up a little bit, uh, and just like, you know, builds a couple of Spore Colonies, defends against the Mutas, defends against the Lings, and just drones up a little bit more and tries to take advantage of that extra hatchery and, uh, you know, the, the the expansion, he might be able to, uh, to pull this game back, but... Um, Crazy Hydra definitely doing a fantastic job so far, and is going to expand, uh, uh, take an expansion of his own as well. Absolutely. Uh, nice spore colony placement. Very important to get the maximum coverage out of the minimum amount of spore colonies. Uh, having to build an extra spore colony at this point for coverage is definitely not something that he wants to do, considering his drone count is extremely low. Uh, but he is forced to build at least two at each base. Indeed he has. And But look at how few drones he has now. Spending four drones on those sun colonies. He's got, he's got two guys mining at the natural, and I think something only like six drones maybe at the main base. So really, really low economy right now. But, you know, Crazy Hydra doesn't have that many drones of his own. I think he's maybe only got like ten drones in his main base also. Ooh, and a lane actually getting in going to possibly kill a drone, uh, and that could actually be pretty big. Doesn't oh, get it. Barely not. not. One hit left wow. on that drone. Nice save there. This is crazy. Uh, we got Mutas out on the map. Not sure if any buildings are vulnerable or if he'll go for drones or what he actually plans to do with these Mutas. Uh, he is establishing his expansion, so he may be droning up a little behind this. I don't know for sure. Uh, but yeah, both players' economy definitely hurting. Uh, Crazy Hydra has the advantage and then he's obviously got the Mutas about out, but his opponent does have that early air expansion. CJ Hydra, that is. Oh, and we actually see a third hatchery going down at the third base for uh, Crazy Hydra. Yeah. So he will be taking as much of an advantage here as he can with this map control provided by these mutants. Now, one thing to note is that that base is, in fact, it's a mineral-only base, and it's also inside oh. the main base. So there's actually, uh, it's, pr it's a oh, okay. protected expansion, basically. There is still only one entrance into his main base. Uh, so he can defend that while defending his natural, but it looks like a big Ling attack coming in here, taking out all the Zerglings of Crazy Hydra, but the Mutas overhead are going to put an end to that. He might try and snipe a couple of drones here. It looks like he's going after the drones. Can he get a drone kill? Looks like he gets one drone one kill, I think. Now. And the rest of the drones do survive. The rest of the Lings are gone. I'm not sure if that was worth it. But, um, yeah, it's very interesting that crazy uh, that Hydra's taking the mineral-only expansion there, uh, because minerals generally in ZVZ not really that important. You, the gas is the key resource for those mutas and those scourge, which are very gas-heavy uh, units. But, I mean, Absolutely. if he's going to make a third hatchery anyway, he might as well make it there, considering it is a, yeah. a free expansion, uh, essentially. Yeah, and that definitely will allow him to get a high Ling count for <laughs> run-bys and counter-attacks, etc. 
uh, which is definitely very important. Uh, you know, having a lot of lings can be very useful, although the mutas definitely take a take a more important role at this stage in the matchup. Indeed, indeed. The mutas going out to try and do some harassment. Um, maybe pick off a drone or two with some good muta micro. Uh, as you can see, the yeah, extractor is actually hanging out a little bit. A bit oh, it does get one drone. Very nice. No mutas do fall. He might want to pull back that injured muta. Losing even one muta to spore colonies uh, in ZVZ is definitely very important. You know, every muta really counts because when muta f when mutas battle, whoever has one extra muta, you know, will pretty much win. Yep. There obviously there is the element of c control in it, but you know, it's very hard to run away from a losing muta battle. You pretty much just yep. die. Yep, there is moving shot. So when you commit to a battle. We commit to a battle, that's definitely a big commitment. By the way, uh, if you look at the food count, sorry, 39 supply for uh, Crazy Hydra against the 28 supply for Hydra, a huge yeah. supply lead. Now, yeah, 10 supply in a game like this is definitely very important. You know, it's pretty much all in those mutas. I mean, if you just, uh, you, you know, 10 supply doesn't sound like a lot, but if you just think about it in terms of perc percentages, like... He's got what a 33% <laughs> supply lead over uh, over his opponent, and that that sounds like a lot more. Um, yeah. Anyway, meanwhile, a lot of lanes running out here. It looks like he's gonna try and sneak around and maybe do a, a backstab, but uh, that is gonna get scouted by Crazy Hydra. Just look at the minimap. Look at how much vision he has. The yellow dots spreading all over the place here. Um, just not allowing Hydra to do any kinds of tricks like these. Indeed, actually, one link does get in the main for Hydra. Scouting the entire main. Nothing, of course, out of the ordinary with just the Spire there. Uh, actually, a Ling for Crazy Hydra getting in as well, perhaps. Yeah, he actually may be perhaps able to snipe that hatchery with some Lings if he ever gets in there. Uh, they are very weakened. Uh, Ling's actually getting into Crazy Hydra's mineral line. Quite a few, in fact, getting all over. But uh, <sighs> Crazy Hydra is doing a pretty good job of cleaning this up. He did lose a drone or two, but nothing too deadly. A nice job by Hydra trying to, you know, for, uh, tax his opponent's multitasking a little bit uh, by going in the main and the natural at the same time. But you know, yeah, definitely. Crazy Hydra seemed to be on top of it. Doesn't really, uh, didn't really take too too much damage. He did lose a couple of drones though, but a lot of lings were sacrificed, and he's keeping his supply lead right now. I'm actually curious if either player is getting air upgrades. Um, the plus one carry piece yeah, is actually huge because the mutas bounce obviously uh, hits three times, so the armor value is applied three times. Yeah, th uh, that plus one armor is actually really, really important. However, the plus one attack, of course, is a little bit cheaper, and you know, therefore, in a really close game, might be preferred. Indeed. Although, I think, I think really, if you're going to commit to an upgrade, you pretty much always want to commit to that carapace. It also uh, finishes a little bit faster, I believe. So yeah, oh, as, as you say, uh, yeah, I think it does. Um, oh, interesting. So I did not know that. Yeah, usually, yeah, getting plus one attack first is some kind of very specific timing, whereas otherwise you just want to get the carapace. And looks yeah. like a, a third expansion here at the gas expansion for uh, Hydra. If he can keep that alive, that will be very nice for him, considering he, that will mean he has one extra gas over his opponent. Uh, Crazy Hydra having taken the mineral only base instead. But it looks like this, this oh. Zerling's killing a couple, couple of drones, drones dying. here. Not the best exchange, but a huge supply lead now, oh, like a 20, 25 supply <coughs> lead for Crazy Hydra. I really don't think he can lose this game. Yeah, his Muta flock is definitely sizably larger than his opponent's. Uh, he should be able to die at the third base extremely easily as soon as he realizes what is going on. Uh, he won't be able to make a direct attack into the natural or the main for quite a while, considering the spore colonies there. Uh, but he does have pretty much full map control, and even if they were both stay on two bases forever, and you know he would, he were to just deny the third, he would still have a huge advantage. Base going down for Crazy Hydra on the right, as well at the gas expansion. Yeah, I think it's a very good idea. I mean, you know, he has the the air superiority, he has the map control, he's taken out this expansion. I mean, he's got everything going for him at the moment. Um, he's got a lot of mutas. Yeah, and the thing is, in ZVZ, it's really difficult to make a comeback because everything is so low economy, everything is so tight. I mean, there's really not much room. He's, he's trying, he's been trying to do these link backstabs and, and you know try and fight his way back that way. But Crazy Hydra's been just been playing so carefully, so impeccably that it's just not really possible. I mean, you know, you kind of need your opponent to make some mistakes, and play a little bit sloppily uh, to come back in this situation, and it's just not happening. He has lost that hatchery now, and he's just so ridiculously far behind. 
It looks like Plus One Carapace has now finished for Crazy Hydro's air, so uh, he's doing a good job. But oh, it looks like a few uh, links yeah. getting stuck on the back here. Um, basically, there is a pathing problem in Brood War where neutral buildings are not considered in AI pathing, so units will actually try and run through them if they if they're nearby. So you have to be very careful with your rally points there. I think that hatchery in the back is rallied poorly, which is causing those links to freak out like that. Yeah, uh, definitely a famous example of that. Well, not famous, I guess, but prominent one <laughs> a few weeks, a few months ago, I guess, Jadong managed to sit a couple of drones <laughs> or something on a ramp and block about 20, 30 plus Hydras from getting out of his base for an extremely long amount of time. He ended up actually winning the game. Either way. Indeed, that was awesome. There are gifs of plenty of that. Someone wants to link that in the chat <laughs> for anyone who hasn't seen that. It is so funny. You don't even need to know like what the situation was or or anything really. You just like look at it and you're just like, what is going on? <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. Indeed. Third gas being established for Crazy Hydra, as we did mention, that gas is key in creating a large muta ball. Uh, and you know the mutas are pretty much what there is in this game. Uh, considering how much Hydra is kind of playing defensive with these spore crawlers, you know, we could see a tech towards defilers for plague or something perhaps, uh, or maybe some other weird tech that we don't too often see. But, you know, continuing on with mutas pretty much will never cost you a game except in very specific situations where your opponent has prepared a, you know, weird counter strategy. Yep. And, I mean, it's so funny that this game is still going on. I yeah. I think it's kind of on Crazy Hydro. Crazy Hydro just deciding not to press the issue. I mean, I hope he's just like going to wait for plus one attack and then go for it or something. Like, he's getting a little bit silly at this point. He can just end the game. Um, look at how many mutas he has. Oh, man. I mean, he's like. I mean, there are quite a few spore colonies, but I think he could still. Oops, I just paused the stream. Sorry. Uh, I think he could still. Yeah. Bust this. With that right many mutalisks, I, I don't think it makes a difference. Um, yeah. It, because spores will just fall so fast. Okay, he's mining his. You can actually really see the exact amount because they never fan out really, but uh, yeah. we can tell that it's a lot more than his opponent. Um, one little tip that uh, I learned is that when if you just look at the shadow underneath the mutas, you can get a rough idea. Um, basically, the darker the shadow, obviously, the more mutas there are in the clump. So uh, that's. I mean, at this point, there's so many mutas that it doesn't really help anymore. But you know, when you're looking at like one control group of muta, you can differentiate between you know like five or six muta and a you know eleven muta like that. Um, yeah. So it's actually quite useful. But anyway, it looks like the mutas of Hydra are moving out now, going towards a three o'clock base. The mutas of Crazy Hydra on an intercept course here. He's he's staying nearby his main. He doesn't want some kind of weird muta attack into his main that'll kill a lot of drones and aspire. But here we go. We might have the big engagement here. The final battle, muta on muta action over the base of Crazy Hydra. This is actually good go. for him because some of the muta bounce is being tanked by the hatchery and the eggs. So not only does he have a superior air force, but he's also got defender's advantage, and he's got links going into the main base of Hydra here. Hydra is just completely dead. Yeah, that's going to be wow. it. Wow, GG. Uh, he was completely evaporating for Hydra, and that will be... GG. Alright, i got to refresh the stream because I'm slightly behind. Crazy I'm Hydra making it 2-1, and KT Rolster takes down the Brood War part oh, of yeah. this series. Indeed. Congratulations, oh, but it God, is not I over yet. To up update the players. And now we are moving on to SC2, and Flash has not yet played today. Oh, baby, Flash hasn't played, and we're moving on to StarCraft 2. Everybody get excited. You should already be excited, but if you weren't, you are now. Exactly, and if you were already excited, get more excited. Boom. Uh-oh, um, another shield yes. person appeared in my chat. More shields! It's crazy, man. It's being taken over. It's like a hostile takeover right now. All sorts of crazy icons going on. Alright, so everybody play or pray <laughs> pray for Flash. Pray they did not they were not dumb enough <laughs> to set him for game three. Oh god. <laughs> that would be nightmare of the century. And I can hear the commentators already saying Lee Yong Ho! They want Flash as, as well. God, I'm getting all tongue-tied just thinking about it. I'm so excited. 
Also, by the way, guys, if my voice sounds hoarse and I cough or sniffle occasionally, I apologize. It's because I've been casting a long time, and I'm a little bit sick, actually, so, yeah. Sad. That's unfortunate. Very sad. Someone suggesting let's get Pound Flash trending on Twitter. Should we do it? Let's try it. You guys can do it. I don't use Twitter, so I can't do anything. But... Alright. Guys. Twitter.com slash PokeBunny. You can just retweet mine if you want. Just Pound Flash. That's all. Hashtag Flash. See if you can get Flash. Go, go, go. Hashtag Flash. Hashtag Flash. Hash Flash. Hash flash. Someone wants to post it up on Reddit and make it more popular. Let's see if we can get a hash flash trending on Twitter. Dude, it's gonna be so yeah, funny when the KT coach trolls us and like sends mind barracks in action as his three players, <laughs> and people are just like, "What? What's going on? What's gonna happen?" That'd be pretty wonderful. And pretty awful. Oh yeah, another important point that I just saw in thread. Hydra, the purple Zerg, the CJ Zerg in that game, is actually half blind. He only has one functioning eye. Wait, really? Yeah. I thought that was a joke. <laughs> no, yeah, he only has one functioning eye. No, it's true. It's completely serious. I actually knew that before, but I forgot because I haven't watched this game in forever. Aha! Uh -huh. That's interesting. <laughs> Thank you for everyone, the kind comments and the threads and stuff. I just searched my name to see people talking about me, and there <laughs> were some people talking about me, and thanking us for the English commentary. So, thank you too for watching. Nice, nice. Looks like we're actually the only uh, event on air right now, actually, as well. We are Hitting monopolizing StarCraft. Indeed we are. With sick viewer counts. Hey, TT1 is streaming this. What? He's trying to steal our viewers. TT1. He's jealous. TT1's so jelly. Sorry, everyone is probably tired of me reading comments about myself, so I'll stop reading them. <laughs> no, I'm just taking a breather here. Got to keep myself alive for the rest of the day. We're, really we're not idea. even halfway through. <laughs> True. That's depressing to think about. Dude, it's exciting to think about. Think about how many more awesome games we're going to see. You know what? You're actually right. You know, I was thinking that it was depressing to think about, but I'm... Like, I'm not even pretending. Like, I'm legit really excited to watch a bunch more StarCraft. Hey, dude. Part of me wishes that the KT match was at the end, so that I would be <laughs> more excited at the very end. Actually, wait, I, wait. Aside, aside from the Flash hype, I'm a very big KT fan. Well, uh, well, Woongjin Stars is playing at the end, and they're supposed to be the best at SC2, right? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. We get to see Solki. We might, you know, if we could see a Solki Ace match <laughs> or something, that might be pretty fun to top it off. Oh, Korean guy. KT wins. Translate. Ah. Oh. Mm, sure. Oh, that, like they're they're impressed by the they're impressed impressed by his zergling movements apparently. Also, yeah, it was Michael actually in this really battle good. over here. I gotta agree with them. Uh, he, the question was like, was like, why are you so good at this battle and stuff? And then the answer was, <clears throat> he was just confident that like this final the events happening, he's hyped up, and then he said he grew some balls. 
so he can do this like really big offensive attacks and gain some big advantage of it. <laughs> what a boss. Indeed. Oh, so in this situation was um, like often occurred in the practice game, so he was really used to it as well. Ah, very important. They're asking about, <coughs> about what kind of thoughts you're having in uh, season two overall. So he's worried in the beginning, but as uh, time comes, he's going to be better and better. So he's just saying, oh, so it, it seems like your skills are increasing every day. And then he's saying, oh, I think I can reach a, reach to a point that I can be a, uh, one of those the, the top threes or a really strong player. Uh, so the question is, all the Zerg player, all the StarCraft One Zerg players, when they switch to StarCraft Two, they always cry that the race is so weak. <laughs> um, so he's asking that to him, and then he says, uh, "I mean, even though I got a very bad race, I was <laughs> I practiced really hard, <laughs> try to win with the Zerg race." Yeah, they all seem to think the Zerg sucks. I don't know why. Yeah. It's probably the most different, like, mechanically, like, the feel, the kind of style. Yep. So right know. now he's saying in his, his practice games, the practice ladders, or his practice game with the other um, pro gamers, he said mm -hmm. he never won yet. <laughs> <laughs> probably not looking forward to next week. Yeah, he's saying, it, ch it says uh, the Zerg changes a lot. It's like, it's very versatile. And it's like every time he has, a like, a battle, it's not as... It's like it's different every time, and then you can't really find out a pattern for it. So he just he just decided that he's like he just concluded that the race is really confusing. That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, saying he's really he's really glad that there's so many fans like cheering him on. Since like season two just started, it's been a long time. Just thank you for coming and. Yep. <coughs> Woohoo! Thank you, Crazy Hydra, for thank being a Crazy for Hydra. Awesome game. Yep. <laughs> and yes, thank you, ATK, for translating. Yep. Like oh. <coughs> Can't wait for Flash, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's just here to yeah, translate sure the Flash I'll interview. Ask him a bunch of That's like all he's actually here for. Whew. You're gonna peak hard in viewer numbers when Flash plays. I gotta say. Oh, baby. The second Flash steps in the booth, like, Reddit will explode. <laughs> it's like instant like, double There will your be account. at least, like, five threads. OMG, Flash SC2. Yeah, so the commentators are talking about StarCraft 2, where th the overall flow is, like, really different. So, um... They they themselves don't know what kind of plays are uh, like shown, so they're really yeah. excited as well. Nice. I'm excited. We got StarCraft 2 coming up next. You know what? God, I love this format. I, I actually really didn't think I'd be saying this, but I actually find this so entertaining. Like, right. I think it's awesome. Poke Bunny, Poke Bunny has been converted to the dark side. Guys, I would hate being a player. He is a Kespa agent. Show. Poke Bunny's lie. being paid by Kespa. Ah! <laughs> I mean, yeah. this, I, I don't know, this hybrid thing is really cool. I mean, we could have uh, some of the Brood War fans transitioning very slowly, I guess. Indeed. Yeah. That is our we goal. have to watch StarCraft 2. That, that was kind of the goal, I think, of the, 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 the slow switch, is that they could get a lot of the fans to stay with it. Uh, and I actually think this, like, mixed format is really fun. Like, I, I, 
I think the strategy is like kind of comparing them between the two games and seeing how they adapt to playing both is just kind of really interesting. Anyway, I would like to see better uh, SE2 games though. I mean, you know, the first series, the PvP was the bizarre, first were pretty average. and then like, the PvC yeah, was, the PvP Jadon was kind of just died. The PvP was not a very interesting game, uh, and the PvC.